Hey everybody, welcome back. Pretty big day for me. I wrapped up all the frame modifications for the four wheel drive Cummins van swap. So I'm gonna go over the rear end uh, and, and highlight the, uh, the 10 and a half uh, Sterling swap into the van on this episode. So stay tuned. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. And thanks a lot for tuning in. All right, so here it is, the uh, 2013 10.5 Sterling with uh, E-Locker and 355 gears. Uh, I wanted to match this with the uh, Dana 60. I was running out of the same year truck. Now, as you can see here, I have a sway bar. Uh, that came out of a 2008 to 2010 Super Duty truck and bolted right in place. I added, I wanted to add the uh, sway bar for extra stability on the highway uh, because of the higher center of gravity and the lift for the four wheel drive. Uh, I'd, I'd hate to see it on its lid. So now I added that in there. I bolted it in and I had to come up with um, some sway bar end links. So I jumped on the old eBay and found these sway bar end links for a 99 to 2014 E-Series van. And I have a little offset, and uh, I was able to uh, make these, these mounts that you see here. Uh, basically, uh, it's a uh, piece of two inch, uh, quarter inch square tubing that I cut on a 45 degree angle and uh, drilled it out such that uh, uh, I could mount the sway bar end link to that. The other thing that I did, as you can see in the same frame, is I uh, swapped out, as you can see here, there's the uh, factory mounting hole for the factory van shock. I ended up on that same 08 to 2010 uh, axle. I uh, I. I took the shock mounts that actually bolted down to the axle. On the newer trucks there, as you can see here, they're welded to the frame, and but the earlier ones were bolted. So on that axle, I was able to unbolt these, you know, uh, take the partial uh, shock mount and weld them in place on this cross member. So now I have a through bolt and a through bolt on both ends. Now the only issue with that is, is as you see over here, on the other side, right down there, on the uh, Super Duty trucks, the shocks, one goes backwards on the driver's side and the passenger side faces forward. Now when I tear this whole suspension apart and I have better access to the axle, I'm going to carefully cut that mount off, rotate it, 180 degrees, and then be able to mount the uh, Super Duty shock on there. Now, I will have to measure that and possibly find a custom shock that fits the need for this build. But that pretty much covers the, uh, uh, the sway bar end links and the sway bar and the shock mount. Um, Something that I did here that I don't know that I discussed on anything earlier was I wanted to use the factory truck emergency brake uh, cables because I just really thought that would be the best thing. So um, the driver's side one, the cable from the uh, attachment point to where it connects to the equalizer uh, was a little bit longer. So I'm like, all right, I got to come up with a solution here. So I actually added on in an, or in an effort to uh, get this equaled up. So uh, without a tape measure handy, I think I added about an inch and a half here to make that um, line up where it needed to be. I really don't want custom parts. want to be able to buy a replacement um, e-brake cables for you know the 2013 super duty truck um, i'll have to tack weld this uh washer 
on there. I needed to add a little thickness to get that to, to lock in where it needed to be. But right there is pretty good. And I will be able to make some adjustments. I may end up having to cut the adjustment nut off or adjustment bolt off. Or I could drill a hole in this cross member large enough to, to let that uh, to go through and still have the adjustment that I need. Um, one other thing you may notice, I do not have the pinion set. I do not have, it's probably easier to look over here. I do not have the perches welded in place yet. Uh, that's one of the last things I'm going to do. And I'm, I, I, I cut the factory ones off and move them over. I'm not going to reuse those being cast. I'm going to buy a set probably from uh, Skies Off-Road and uh, re-weld a set of perches on there. But that will come when final assembly on the van is set. So uh, I'm pretty excited right now. With this being completed, I, uh, I should be able to tear the frame apart and uh, and get everything off and send it out to the sandblaster so pretty pretty exciting all right now i know i covered this in an earlier video but as you can see here's the original mount location for the uh leaf spring and i am running the 2013 leaf springs and so therefore there are plus or minus 10 inches longer. I did have to move the uh, front hanger forward, redrill it and bolt it back in place. I did reinforce it and I had to make a larger pocket because the spring uh, width is wider and did not fit inside that pocket. So I did modify that and not saying you couldn't do the 10 and a half sterling swap without uh, without swapping the springs. You could leave your Econoline van springs on the original mount location and just swap the axle in. If you were just looking for the uh, E the E locker uh, in your four wheel drive van or even your two wheel drive. Um, grocery getter right a lot of guys are just jacking up their their two-wheel drives and getting that uh baja grocery getter kit and and this would be this would be an option to get you that e-locking rear if you wanted it um now with the back let me switch over to here i'm running the super duty uh shackle swing shackle here um and the only thing I had to do was drill this out to, to fit this metric bolt off of the Super Duty truck. And uh, once I put the weight on, I'll probably set that a little bit more to vertical so that it can kick kick over uh, with the weight of the the weight of the uh, chassis and and all of the load on it. So um, you know, basically, you know, this is the overview of uh, of the van. I'm uh, like I say, really excited about getting it, uh, getting all the frame modifications done. Uh, the one thing I want to do before I tear things apart is I want to bolt the gear vendor up. So I might even do just a little video of, of showing that with uh, the whole thing in place uh, and uh, trying to get a rough uh, drive shaft measurement from the uh, end of the gear vendor to there. I have the stub shaft from gear vendor and I have a drive shaft from the donor truck. So that's that. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope this gave you a better understanding of how to swap that 10 and a half into your uh, third gen Econoline van. I'm really excited about getting this done, put this frame together, paint it up and uh, get the body, the body mounted back on the chassis and uh, start on the uh, finer points of uh, buttoning up the body and uh, moving on to a little bit of engine performance and uh, what it's going to take to get an intercooler in it, things this thing never had. And 
the, the uh, next step of the adventure. So thanks a lot. Again, if you like what you see, like and subscribe, and I'll keep the videos coming. Thanks a lot.